Hello everyone, this is Prowl and welcome to a look at the third and final mob to be voted on at Minecraft Live in 2021, my friend here, the Copper Golem. This add-on was created by Velvoxel Raptor and brings you their quick interpretation of what the Copper Golem could potentially be like. A link will be provided in the description below if you would like to download this awesome add-on. And I recommend you do, because it's really fun to play with. Minecraft Live will be happening in two days from the point that I release this video, October 16th at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. I will be live streaming this event with my friend and fellow creator here from the Bedrock Guide world, Blue Jay, where we will be reacting to and commenting on the event live as it happens and providing more in-depth analysis and speculation after the event is over. So instead of just watching the Minecraft Live event, Watch it on our stream for an even more awesome time. Now, if you haven't already seen Mojang's video on the Copper Golem, let's take a look now. Tiny Yens, I'm down here. Where are we? I don't know, but look at this lovely copper. Is that a Copper Golem? Yes, it must be old or a time they freeze into statues. Let's build our own Copper Golem. Maybe it can help us. This one has a lot of life in it. We're saved! The Copper Golem is a mob that you, the player, can build yourself. It oxidizes over time and loves to randomly press copper buttons. So, they would be added to the game as well. Will they make it to the show on time? Did they save any cookies for Tiny Boo? Do you want the Copper Golem to join Minecraft? Tune into Minecraft Live on October 16th to cast your vote and change Minecraft forever. There you have it, the third and final mob. Unless a fourth comes out after I've recorded this video, I doubt it, but just in case I'll throw that in, has been revealed. And it is this little dude right here, the Copper Golem. As you saw, there are some unique features never before seen with the Copper Golem and even the mention of a new button, the copper button, would be added into Minecraft. Like before, I have paid attention to tweets from the developers, mostly Olraf this time around, and while not a lot of additional information was really put out there, we know a few things they may consider when implementing the copper golem into the game, such as lightning striking it, probably taking the oxidation off, possible connections to archeology span in the future, and possibly even making them posable once they are fully oxidized but we'll but i'm getting a little ahead of myself we'll talk about that a little bit later let's talk more about how the copper golem actually works and how you get it other than just these spawn eggs that i have in the add-on now in this add-on you create the copper golem via the crafting table where you put it like this you do this right here and you actually end up crafting in a copper golem that you can then place down on the ground but we happen to know that that's not how it's going to work if and when the copper golem is actually added to the game because tiny agnes said the copper golem will be built not crafted built so how would it be built let's take a look at the possibilities so i know the first one that people are probably going to go to is oh well you build an iron golem like this right you go like this like this and you put this right here but there's there's a little bit of a problem with that. Let me let me show you. If we take this iron golem right here and we put it beside this little dude. Do, do you see the difference? Do you see why that doesn't make sense? It's because he's orange. No, I'm kidding. It's because he's so much bigger. So this doesn't really make sense to me. It would be really weird if it shrunk back down in size. So how else would you do it? What if it was just like this? Well, that wouldn't make sense, because what if you just want to put one of these on top of a copper block? Then you're going to end up with the golem every time. So there's a few other possibilities I can think of. Maybe you do this, and you put a couple of copper buttons on the side as arms. That could definitely make sense. I could see that 100% becoming a copper golem. Or maybe... Oh, and then also, you got to have this, right? And I guess you would have this too. Because it has a little rod on top of its head. So that, that could definitely be a copper golem. Um, maybe they don't want to go the pumpkin route because I don't know, some people I've seen are against that for whatever reason. So maybe it's just two copper blocks and this and this. 
That could maybe be it. It reminds me of Bender from Futurama for some reason. I don't know. Um, or maybe it's just a single block like this. There's a few different possibilities that they could possibly go with. I like this one the best. It kind of fits the lore of Minecraft and more accurately looks like maybe what the copper golem crafting would kind of feel like. But then you got to think, well, what about this? Can you make them a different oxidation states? Because you can have oxidized copper golems, right? As you can see, the one I have over there is, is he fully oxidized? I can't really tell, but maybe you want to just make one in the oxidized state. So would you be able to do this? I would hope so. That way you can keep them in that state. And we'll talk about the oxidized state of the uh, copper golem later. But there's your possibilities right there. Which one do you want to see happen in the game? Let me know down in the comments below. Option one, option two, option three, or option four. Which one makes the most sense to you? Now, once you have a copper golem, it will seek out copper buttons and press them. Unfortunately, this add-on does not add in copper buttons. At least I don't think it does. Let me see. It doesn't. So the copper golem will seek out copper buttons and press them. In this case, in this add-on, since there's no copper buttons included, it'll just seek out buttons and press them, right? So if I go and spawn this guy in, he's going to he's gonna hit the button, and he kind of runs away, which I think is hilarious. And that actually brings up a really cool idea for me, because if you remember in the video that we watched, the, the copper golem, he's just like, he's a button smasher. Dude was just like constant, like boop, 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 like just pressing buttons nonstop. And this makes me think, what if we had different behavior copper golems, right? Because you could have one copper golem that like, that does that, right? He's kind of mischievous. He presses the button and runs off. It doesn't want to be seen that he pressed the button. Maybe it even goes to like, quote unquote, hide somewhere. And then you have the other one that's just like, doo, 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 just like randomly pressing buttons and just like, he doesn't really care, has no cares in the world, just wants to press the buttons. And maybe they could look different in some way. Maybe the antenna is like slightly bent or upside down, or maybe his eyes look different. Like there could be a few different ways that they could visually cue, cue you as to what type of golem you have. This isn't without precedent, by the way, because they already have this type of feature in Minecraft, the panda. You can have an angry panda, a like the kind of like lazy one, the sneezy one. They're basically the 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 seven dwarfs of pandas, right? And they all look slightly different. So they could do that with golems too. And that would be really neat to have maybe a few different behavior golems because then it's almost kind of like you're getting different mobs into the game at once maybe they even slightly change the recipe maybe the dopey one you uh do something like this you have to like do a little bit extra build or maybe you put the antenna upside down like that right or there could be like a few different things that you could do to build the type of golem that you want as opposed to them all being the same but just the fact that they can press buttons is a totally new mechanic to Minecraft. Nothing else in the game. Okay, why are you chasing me? Nothing else in the game can interact with buttons currently. Uh, just players, that's it. So the fact that you could have one of these guys press a button is actually a cool new game mechanic. Now, a lot of players have made reference to this being a new sort of randomizer you can employ in the game. A randomizer is basically a redstone attachment that people make to like attach to a larger build of some sort or a game of some sort that gives just a random outcome or one that cannot be predicted, right? This could often be done by something like, I don't know, having a chicken in a small area with a pleasure plate, pleasure, pleasure plate, a pressure plate that just randomly walks over it at different times. Or I've seen people do this with a bat. Now though, you could more easily make such a contraption with a copper golem, such as this little location right here. We have a redstone lamp, a button on it. Which which button is it gonna press? If we put this, up, oh, oh, hold on, here it comes, run away. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to randomize it which button is he going to press all right went for that one he's going for that one too there's one right there golems okay they're all going to go for that one you okay it wanted to press that one it didn't even press it all the way interesting so this may just be a uh, behavior with the add-on i know at least in bedrock edition like some base whoa Whoa, what are you doing? Is it hitting? <laughs> okay, well, that's kind of cool, uh, kind of funny. Um, but this is just basic behavior that's built into the add-on because the creator made it in a short time period. 
Um, I imagine it's probably using some kind of AI from another mob and just been modified. And in Bedrock Edition, a lot of times mobs like might favor one cardinal direction over another. So it's really hard to tell, you know, or display exactly how it would work here in a basic add-on such as this. Uh, but you kind of get the point, right? It, it could randomly pick between these two. Also though, with the copper golem, a copper button would be introduced into the game as the copper golem is only interested in pressing copper buttons. What we don't know about copper buttons is would they function differently? Maybe it takes longer after you press it before it pops back out. Or what if it can only be pressed by copper golems? Also, are there oxidized copper buttons? And if so, would they function differently? Maybe as they age and get older, they sort of get stuck and stay pressed for longer times. Then a fully oxidized copper button, represented by this warp button right here, maybe that would just stay pressed, it's stuck. It never comes back out. That could be interesting, like mechanic. And I can see people like introducing that in really interesting ways into mini games or just wanting to have a base that feels like it needs to be maintained. Also, let's note, you would be able to wax these copper buttons in theory. So that way, if you don't want it to change from that to that and get stuck, you could just wax it in whatever state that you want it to stay in. Now, as your copper golem ages in your world, just like copper, it will begin to oxidize. And each stage of oxidation makes the golem move slower until finally it freezes in place like this one right here. Now, this one right here, we can actually kind of push and move like an entity, like a mob or a villager. And like you see, like it still has an animation when it moves. I imagine the actual implementation of this could work differently. Maybe you can mine the golem up with your pickaxe and then take it and place it somewhere else. Or maybe it would move like this, but they would get rid of like the arm swinging and that kind of stuff. I don't know. I can see a lot of different like forms of implementation that they could possibly like use with the copper golem in the game. I kind of like the idea of being able to mine it and take it around. Maybe that would be a really neat game mechanic to have, but in any event, it's going to freeze in place, effectively becoming a statue. Now, while I think the redstone implications are cool and I can imagine some very creative people and content creators coming up with some awesome uses of this, I am actually more interested in what the copper golem brings as a decorative and lively bit to the world. Like I just mentioned, being used as a statue that you could put around your base or your builds or maybe as a lawn ornament of some sort. And I've seen a ton of people mention these things, but I actually imagine having a much more lively use of them. Imagine having a town or your base like I have here. This is a creative copy of my bedrock uh, guide base, all decorated up for Halloween. And imagine you have these lively little creatures running around mischievously or not mischievously pressing buttons. Maybe I want them to be able to visit the shop, right? So maybe I'd hide a button right here and maybe I want them walking over here. So I'd put a button back here and possibly checking out the graveyard. So I could put a button, I don't know, somewhere back here, right? And then all of these like different little places for the golem to be able to potentially visit. And then I plant a few of them around. We put a golem here. Oh, this one's gonna see the ones in the pathway and I'm sure press it. Nope, it's going for the one on the wall. Put one over here, right? Put one over here. And now all of a sudden I have golems walking around my world just kind of like visiting from site to site, going and visiting the shop, going over here and like hanging out by this fire, going and checking out the Halloween decorations in the graveyard and going over here to the market stall. Um, yeah, they're not people, so maybe you wouldn't use them in more people-like ways, or maybe you would, I don't know. You would have that option to be able to use them as an aesthetic, lively piece to the world especially if like nothing else can like attack and kill them at least natively it'd be a lot different than say villagers are where you really have to be careful and keep them protected whereas these guys could just kind of walk around all the time and just randomly get hurt and attack each other or whatever it is they're doing right now they've they've gone completely bonkers maybe even in some locations too you could put a dispenser with a button right here on the front of it and then periodically they would go press that button and an axe would actually scrape the oxidation off of them because remember they do get oxidized over time they 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 eventually they're going to turn into little green guys that are statues and they freeze so you could either let them do that and manually go around and clean them off as part of like just maintenance of your base area 
or maybe you could put that axe down with the dispenser or that dispenser down with the axe inside of it and it periodically they just kind of clean themselves off which would be really a, like a cool thing to see too stop trying to click me i'm not a, i got a button also even further i imagine me putting them at my farms so instead of my farms looking like they are automated themselves it looks as though the golem is actually doing all of the work controlling the farm and making it operate I actually, I love this idea and can see myself using it quite a lot around the worlds uh, that the farms that I make in the worlds that I build, right? Like my uh, general mob farm I have here. Instead of it just looking kind of like this, it looks really cool, right? And it's very nice and organized and clean. But what if we have a couple of random buttons around for the golem to be able to press? I don't even know if he can press buttons that high, can he? Okay, we'll put them down here. So now I have some buttons in some miscellaneous areas that look like they do something, even though they actually don't. And I could put down a couple of golems that now will just walk around the little area here, get broken like that guy right there did, <laughs> and like just randomly press buttons throughout the base. It kind of looks like they're operating this farm now instead of the farm operating itself. How awesome is that for immersion in your world? There is still a lot we don't know about the copper golem though. How do you craft it or build it, I guess? How long does it take to oxidize? Is there a way to take it with you or control it in some way once you've created it? Is there any way for it to become hostile to the player? What about other mobs? Will zombies or skeletons attack it? Will it attack them first? Will it attack them back if it attacks them first? Or will it just run away? Maybe when it sees a mob, it would run and press a button, activating some sort of trap to protect the area that you have it in. That could be a cool and unique mechanic for the golem to have will interact with any other forms of redstone or have any other redstone properties of its own. There are a lot of questions here to ponder that we just won't know the answer to unless the copper golem wins. And we see what the development team comes up with or the community comes up with and provides us feedback. So that will pretty much sum up the copper golem today and what we know about it. What are your thoughts about the copper golem? What will you use it for? Will you be voting for it? I appreciate everybody watching this video today. Support the channel by donating a click to that like button. Donate your subscription to the channel. And to anyone that sees this video before Minecraft Live, join Blue Jay and I at the event. It's going to be a great time. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.